Girls do crazy shit when, when no one's around to watch and when there is no prescribed rules. There is a prescribed rule for going on a Friday, on a, on a date in an evening with a guy to sit and eat food. It follows a story which is not supposed to end in sex on the first night, because that's not what good girls do. But I met this, this guy, he's, he texts me and says, hey, I'm, just, I'm running out to, to go and buy some socks. I'll be in your area. Let's meet for a coffee on the way. All right? And then she met, met me, is it a date, is it not? We're having a chat. And then, I, and then I, however it is, say, hey, let's, let's go upstairs and chill at my place, or do you want to come up or something? Suddenly she's doing this thing where she's fucking a guy in the middle of the day that she met two days ago that she's only spent 45 minutes FaceTime in total with, but it just doesn't break any rules because she doesn't have parameters and no one, there's no rule book for that bit because no one does that. So let's have a bit of a chat about the technicalities of dates themselves, right? So any ideas what would make a not particularly good or effective date? Dinner. Dinner. Yes. Like eating, it's not that eating is banned, right? But the formal, you know, North American dating model of taking a woman to an opposite sitting meal place uh, is not good because you can't touch each other. You have to watch each other eat. It takes quite a long time. Uh, it's, it's also sets up a formal frame in her mind. It's a dinner date. That's a thing. People have heard of that before. Do women do wild, crazy, slutty things on dinner dates? Are they supposed to? No. Nah. Although there was this one time, <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. There was one time, like this was fucking 10 years ago in Dnipropetrovsk in uh, Eastern Ukraine. I went, um, I met a girl on MySpace back in the day. And she told me she wanted to go on a dinner date. And I was like, oh, I don't do dinner dates. But like, she was very adamant that we, if I, if, and I said, I don't do dinner dates. And she said, then you are not a real man. You must show that you appreciate the world or something. I was like, all right, whatever, we'll go to dinner. Uh, and then she took me to the, to an expensive restaurant in Nipro, which I, back then I would never go to restaurants that cost money. Uh, and, and so, and she dressed up in this fucking banging dress. And so I put on a shirt. Uh, this one, I was a grungy backpacker. And we went to this like fancy restaurant where there was a whole bunch of Audis and Mercs out the front. And it was, and as I walked in, I realized it was like a Ukrainian gangsters kind of place, right? It was, you know, that kind of place. So there was like a few big fat dudes with their like banging hot chicks there in their suits. And then uh, the waiter took us into another room where there was no one in, no one was in, no one in there. And so, and she sat down opposite me. I'm like, ah, opposite. All right, this is a waste of time. I look at the menu. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, this is going to cost me heaps of money. And, uh, then she, she like, we took the order and then she put the thing down and she said, I can do something very interesting for you. I was like, what? And then she got on her knees, crawled under the table and started blowing me in the restaurant. And then, and I, so I was like, whoa, dinner dates are awesome. <laughs> I'm always gonna take chicks to dinner. And then the waiter came in and it went like this. He walked in and he went like this. <laughs> like, oh, I've seen that before and I'm out, off I go. So anyway, aside from that one time, dinner dates suck. Uh, okay, what, el what else is not a good way to do a date? Some like other types of activities and elements. Movie. Yeah, going and sitting and watching a movie is just almost never a good thing because you're not communicating. The mood of the movie can, can adjust your state in all sorts of ways. Either the movie was really shit and then you feel annoyed or it was really you know, intense and then you've got all these emotions or something, right? So it's the movie's gonna shift your state one way or another and you guys don't have control over it. And yeah, we're sitting next to each other and the best we can do is the you know, 80s date movie where I'm like, and then she's like, oh. and you're like, oh boy, now I have to sit watching the Avengers for two hours. All right, yes, don't do that. You can watch, you can watch something on a screen in a bed or something. Yeah, that's all right. All right, anything else? What, what, what else would make a bad date, logistically? Yes, something that's far away from the bed or a place to fuck, right? Because, yeah, you might have a date in a forest and fuck in the forest or on a beach or something. Uh, but, yeah, because a big problem guys have is they sell the date, not them. So they think, I, oh, there's this impressive thing that's a long way away. And I hear this on the mic sometimes, especially with, like, older guys who've got money, start, starting to talk about a place they know, which like this cocktail lounge, which has this, you know, there's one I was listening to the other day. I was just cringing and I was, almost slapped him in the face when he came back where he was like describing in great detail how they make the cocktails there and how like there's a one where it's like 
in a glass in the shape of a pipe and then you drink it through the pipe. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll go there. That sounds kind of strange. But she's like glazed eyed because he's trying to impress her with this, the shape of a glass in a bar that she's never been to. Right. And, she, and th him thinking, well, I know this place and I know something that, you know, maybe this will impress her. That's, you know, one of the most classic mistakes that men make is trying to impress a woman with the thing you're doing. Okay. So don't make it expensive. Don't make it something where you put in a huge amount of effort into it. Like sometimes you can show care by putting in like a unique type of effort, right? So I remember off the top of my head a date many years ago with this quirky uh, like hipster chick, bang and hot. And uh, I said, do you like playing golf? And she said, I've never played golf. And I said, me neither. But I went to the, the secondhand store and I bought two old putters, right? And then I got a golf ball and I painted it with glow in the dark paint. And then we broke into the local golf course and, and you know played putt putt and then fucked on the golf course right so that date cost me about ten dollars right because the golf clubs were like five bucks each and the golf ball was one whatever twelve bucks and some paint right so it's a super cheap date but she's never had that before and never will have that again and the logistics were good because we it was summer and we could fuck on the nice grass and it was a fun thing to do and i think we took a bottle of wine with us as well right so that's like a you could say a creative date, which I put a bit of creative effort into, but it didn't cost anything and it wasn't like trying to, it was impressive because it was unusual and it was a, an adventure, right? So I took her on a, on a little adventure that no one else would think to do based on like just being in the suburbs of Melbourne, but looking at it like a playground. Okay, so yeah, sometimes those kinds of things, like honestly these days, because I'm far more time efficient, I know that the most simple and effective way to start a sexual relationship is by meeting her at my doll, where I can see outside my, I look down and I wait, like I t say, text me when you're a few minutes away. I don't leave the house until I can see her. All right, she's waiting down by the fountain. There she is, I go down, hey, we go in, we get a coffee. I say, hey, let's take a walk. There's a nice park here. There's a park that's like 50 meters away. We go and sit in the park, we drink the coffee. I touch her on the leg, I loop her back. And then I say, hey, do you want to come up and something? And then she says, yes, no. That's a little adventure, which I've been on before, and it's logistically all happens within several hundred meters. And then I have a nighttime version of that for Budapest, which is the bar that's, you know, another 50 meters down the road. I meet her at 9 p.m., 10 p.m. for one drink, and then I say, hey, you want to have a night cap at my place or something, whatever, invite her back. She says yes or no. And that's, you know, in terms of time efficiency, it takes about an hour max on a date. Yeah. That's because I'm lazy now and I know what works, but throughout my life I did I and I, you know when I'm traveling I just or yeah like last time I was in Barcelona I was just finishing with a student approached a girl and and she, I asked her where she's what she just arrived I said all right let me give you a little tour of Barcelona and we went on a walk through the park went to the where the people were doing salsa had a bad salsa together you know had a went and grabbed a fucking juice sat down in the park started making out right like there's there's no expense or nothing uh, complicated about it, but it was impressive to her because she was new to this town and she went on an adventure with a guy who showed her this city in a different way. Right, so th here's some ways to start thinking about dates. So, the things, once again, not to do. Don't spend a long amount of time on a date. Two hours maximum, right? Because after that, unless you're going home together and you're spending, you know, sex time together. Because after that, even if you're the incredibly good conversationalist or you guys have got a really hot vibe, if we're static, for more than an hour or so and nothing's progressing, it will lose steam, right? Even if you're, even let's say you find you're both into something, you're both into Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, Twilight series or something, and you end up like excitedly talking about the thing you're both really into and it goes on and on and on, this is not seduction. It's, it's basic rapport, but it's not seduction, right? Commonality rapport, basically. So my general rule is one thing, one coffee, one drink, uh, and then, and some movement, and then try to get her home. And then if she doesn't, politely and with no reactivity, send her home. It's better that she's in the taxi or on the tram going, ah, oh, I should have stayed. Then, phew, glad that's over, right? So short and sweet is definitely better. So the other thing is try to keep money out of it to, like keep it to a minimum of involvement. Right, so in Eastern Europe, if you're on a date with a girl, you pay for everything, everything. And if you don't, you'll, you won't get laid, right? 
the way it works in this part of the world and various other, you know, Latin America and various parts of the world, is that if you invite a girl out, you're, it's, it's understood you're paying, especially if you're older than her and you've got some means and she's a student or something, like you, they will be outraged or offended or embarrassed because they can't afford it, uh, and then they won't see you again. In Germany, you know, very, every, most people strictly pay for things down the line or in, or in Holland or in, you know, the Nordic countries, it, there's often a lot more where it's like people will pay half on stuff. Uh, in, you know, if any time a girl off, pulls out a person offers to pay, I let her pay, right? I don't, I don't go, oh, no, 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 because, uh, because like I had this recently with a, with a girl who's extraordinarily beautiful and rich guys are always trying to get her. And we hung out here and then we went to get a coffee in the morning and I went up to order it and then I saw her pull out her purse. And I stepped back and she went in and she paid for it, right? If I had have insisted then, I would have never seen her again because this is a woman who's so used to men trying to pay for her time, her affection, and she hates it, right? Because she knows that then, she, then it's, it's cheapening, right? She's like, I'm, I'm, you can buy me with a coffee, you can buy me with a fancy dinner. Pfft. Like, no, you can't. I choose to be with you or not, and let me show you that I actually can look after myself as well, right? So in that little exchange there, her respect for me went up and I got a free coffee. Pretty good. Yep. Do you mention it at all or do you just Absolutely pay without asking? Absolutely not. You just, you just take it and you pay? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, you don't. If you're paying, you don't mention it. Okay. You're like, oh, no big deal. I got this. No, I just, I just say I'll grab the bill if, or I will. I mean, I don't, I'm not necessarily trying to hide that I pay. Don't, I'm not doing some game. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I went to the bathroom, I came back and I pay and, and I sit down and I said, oh, should we go? And she said, well, what about the bill? And I said, oh, it's done. Okay, like that. It, sure, sometimes I do just do it. It's not secret, I'm just doing it in a way where it's, it's, it's not being done as a thing. But most of the time, I just say, I'll grab the check, thanks. Hey, I don't say anything, I don't look at it and go, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Kind of, a, kind of a big deal, or I say, ah, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, a anything where I'm showing that this hurt, you know, or it's like, okay, well, I'll pay, but you know, you kind of owe me, yeah. Like, I'm upset about the bill, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I paid the bill. Uh, I'm making any kind of deal about it at all. All of that is, is makes her not like you. If you just like a man, pay for the thing, don't, and then move on. Like some girls will register it as, of course, the guys do that all the time. Some will be, some will be like, that was nice of him. Others are, just won't even particularly register it, right? So, or if she feels in any way uncomfortable, she's like, oh no, I'll something. Sometimes I've like. I paid and then the girl says, oh, I'll pay. And I said, oh, no, you grab me an ice cream later or something. Right, so sometimes if she feels in debt, I don't want her to feel in debt in that way. Then, then I'll say, oh, you grab the next one or, or give me a coffee or something. Yeah. Okay, good that you brought it up. But yeah, like, yes, in America or in Western Europe, it's, it's, it's funny because girls can hold both positions in, in the West where they're like, I expect the man to always pay and or I'll pay, or I w I'm, I'm pretending I would pay, but then if he doesn't, I'll be upset about it. Uh, these are all reasons to try and keep it as cheap as possible, right? I'm not trying to impress her with money, because even if you do impress her with money, that's not the type of girl you want, and there's always someone with more impressive money than you. So I'm not trying to impress her with the money, I'm not trying to make a big deal out of it, and I don't want to make the thing expensive, right? Because it can make her feel like she's oh, he's trying to buy me, or, or now I'm obliged to do something, or he's trying too hard, or is that impressive enough, or whatever. So, you know, most of my dates are a coffee, or one drink, or grabbing a snack and going and sitting in a park, you know, getting on a scooter together and scooting around. Like things that are, you know, going, like mostly going for a walk with a cup or something, sitting down and having a chat, or, or taking a little picnic somewhere, or, you know, like if there's things in the, in the area that work, like getting on a scooter or, the, or you're in Prague and there's the paddle boats and you're walking along in an area where, oh, okay, I can add this little piece as a, as a, as a yeah, you're in, that, in the big park in Barcelona and you walk past the, the pond there and she says, that looks fun. I said, ah, oh, fuck it, let's go and do it right now. And we go and we get on the paddle boat, you know, and then I finger her while we're paddling, you know, that's cool, right? It, it showed creativity, but it did, didn't, suggest that I've been planning this big event and trying too hard. You've all seen the movie Hitch, right? Well, the, the, there's a scene in it where he's doing the perfect date for, for the girl. It, it all ends up being, becoming a disaster, but not because of what, like the implication is he created the perfect date, but there were some things that made it wrong. But it's, it's like absolutely terrible dating advice. 
You know, he did all this research, figured out what her family was, took her to the one place, and then there's a bottle of wine waiting here, or any of that kind of stuff. Grand gestures are repulsive to women. Right? And, and every, most nice guy Hollywood movies uh, postulate the idea that if you show a woman that you have uh, that you really are invested and you really care about this and you're willing to put in a whole lot of effort because she's so special that therefore the girl will feel like you're an amazing dude. No, she'll feel like you're a repulsive loser actually because the reality is you don't know this chick, she hasn't earned any of this. That's the kind of stuff, do grand gestures for your wife or you know the love of your life or someone who really deserves it because you actually know that they are that thing. Uh, whereas if you're front facing with that early on, the only women that will be attracted to that are codependent ones that are two points below your attractiveness. Now, everyone, ne neither group can focus because the women are like, hi, there we go. There we go, all okay. good. All right, now we all feel a little bit better. The boys feel a bit better. The girls feel a bit better. Everyone noticed they're like, there's a group of dicks. There's a group of pussies. Let's wave at each other. <laughs> All right, now let's all keep looking and no one can focus on me until they've already, until they're literally out of sight. The guy's like, whatever James is saying is very interesting, but there's a woman, there's, there's some women. There's some, I some, see some women. With other, they're still, they're women over there. <laughs> oh yes, that's, oh yes. Well, it doesn't work like that. They all, they all wave and then when you go over, suddenly they don't want to fuck you. So, cheap and cheerful logistically useful, right? So that it's possible to get to a place. Now, sometimes it's not. Sometimes uh, because of like, she's super busy, you're busy or whatever. And there's only a 30 minute, so this answers your question from earlier. There's, a, there's short time windows to do dates, which you know won't lead to sex on that date. Is that still worth doing? Absolutely yes, right? So when I'm in a busy dating kind of regime, uh, I'll throw in short dates that, that I know are, are just there to have good face time with each other. Like I'll say, hey, uh, you know, like on, when I'm teaching a workshop, my days are pretty much a write off, but I can, and I have in the past, met a girl at 11.30 a.m. near where I'm meeting, meeting the guys and had a coffee and a chat and then said, cool, I got to run to work. Uh, let's hang out soon. That's great. Cause she went and had a coffee and a little adventure with a guy and then it was over too quickly. And then when I hit her up for Thursday, Friday night or something, it's usually a done deal. Yeah. So don't think, and also you got to, you don't think of it like I need to monopolize an entire evening for a date to happen. And you need to also think about this from the perspective of a woman who's in demand. Women's attractive women, let's say their time scales work very differently to ours. They're very consciously aware that from somewhere around 18 to 20 something, right? that this is their time to be young and beautiful and to be in demand. And, and depending on like where they're positioned socially, what their emotional like state is, how confident they are, uh, a woman who's just cute and, and not super confident, but says yes to things, will have a density of experience that you can't possibly imagine in those years, if she chooses to. Because all she has to do is show up or say yes, and then she'll be thrown into like, if she's an eight, she could tomorrow be an Ibiza in, you know, the coolest club in the world. She could be interacting with every subculture of cool dudes within this city if she wished to, right? She can get all sorts of free shit, right? She can get invited by like fabulous people or gay people or whatever who just want to have cute girls around, right? There is so much opportunity for her to experience sexy, fun, interesting stuff. The thing that she, that's hard to get is really good sex for a woman. Really good sex is really rare for her. Uh, high quality male attention. But even that, like if she's cute, she, like she can infiltrate to where all the cool dudes are. And we're not the only ones, unfortunately. There are others out there. So if you try and contact her and you want to try and monopolize her Saturday night, what day is it today? Saturday? Friday night, like you did last night, she's like, that's like a whole Friday night in a woman's time scale is like, you know, three months of a normal guy's life. Like the things that might happen or, he, or, or his entire life worth. Like th in one night, she could have more wild experiences than, a ma than mo many men, in fact, most men will have in their entire life. Think about that. That's not even hyperbole. 
because I've, I've been involved in some of those nights and I've been a bit of, of one of their nights. <laughs> so you need to be aware of that. Like if you can, like you figure out what her time schedule is, she's got, she's social and she's a student. Friday, Saturdays, forget it, except for before and after, right? Let's, let's, let's go for a walk before you go out with the girls. When you finish with the girls, uh, come and see me, right? Because I'm not trying to monopolize her Friday, Saturday night because I know she wants to get all the glitter and excitement and all the, all the fun or the parties or the whatever, or the hang out with the girls at home, sipping wine and talking about the next night or last time or whatever. So I can slip into that and carve out pieces of time that work without being the guy that's like, oh, I want to go on a big date on the Friday. Or I always want to go on a big date. And the other thing is like, Girls do crazy shit when, when no one's around to watch and when there is no prescribed rules. There is a prescribed rule for going on a Friday, on a, on a date in an evening with a guy to sit and eat food. It follows a story which is not supposed to end in sex on the first night because that's not what go, good girls do. But I met this, this guy, he's, he texts me and says, hey, I'm, just, I'm running out to, to go and buy some socks. I'll be in your area. Let's meet for a coffee on the way. All right, and then she met me. Is it a date? Is it not? I'm having a chat, and then I, and then I, however it is, say, hey, let's let's go upstairs and chill at my place, or do you want to come up or something? Suddenly, she's doing this thing, where she's fucking a guy in the middle of the day that she met two days ago that she's only spent 45 minutes FaceTime in total with, but it just doesn't break any rules because she doesn't have parameters, and no one, there's no rule book for that bit because no one does that. All right, so conclusion to this is start thinking of dates not as this formal thing that I have to have a, spend an entire evening doing, spending three or four hours talking to finally get back to sit on a couch to talk for another hour to then at some point fumblingly lean over and kiss and then, she, and then hope that that works. Which it does sometimes. That's how the human race continues. It does kind of work eventually with somebody but it's not optimal, it's not particularly fun, it's not exciting and it is very predictable and there are rules around it. Does that give you some perspectives on dates? Good day, gents. There's just a couple of spots left coming up on our April workshop in Budapest. This is four days of running the streets with myself and the TNL team, practicing the fine art of natural style seduction, approaching on the microphones, conversation classes, meditation, posture, body language, styling, lifestyle design, and so much more. So if you'd like to join me, there's only two spots left. Click the link below to get on an obligation-free call with the team to chat about uh, all of your current issues and see if we can help you out. And if not, see you in the next video. Peace.